three wristwatches. Which one is the odd one out? Round, round, square. Hands, hands, numbers. You could say that one's the odd one out. You could also say that this one is the odd one out because these two, although they don't look it, are very similar in the way they work. Let me show you. I'll turn this one upside down and we'll take the back off and see what we can see. We find that, surprisingly enough, it is extremely simple. There are the hands, I lift that out, and we find that the working parts consist of just a battery, which provides electricity, which goes to a tiny little crystal of quartz underneath there, which vibrates very rapidly and at a very steady pace. That, in turn, drives the mechanism, which turns the hands. It's a quartz watch, very accurate and quite cheap. And this one here, which is digital, has almost exactly the same mechanism to make it go. On the other hand, the other watch, which is a much older one, has a very different sort of mechanism. Let me turn this one over and show you. Look at that. Lots and lots of moving parts, all jammed together very tightly. And when I wind it up, that actually tightens a spring, and we see lots of little cogwheels moving around. When we let it go, the spring underneath there is actually unwinding very slowly and driving cogwheels and springs and all sorts of things to make the watch go to turn the hands. It's an older kind of watch, doesn't keep such accurate time, but not many years ago, that's the only kind we had. Digital watches, quartz watches are much more modern. Well, the old watches had lots of cogwheels in and they're not the only things that have cogwheels, are they? What else has cogwheels? Well, your bicycle for a start. Have you ever looked carefully at cogwheels and noticed that whenever you have a big one joined to a small one and the big one drives the small one, there's actually an increase in speed. Look at that. The yellow one is going around. The blue one is going around much more rapidly because there are less teeth in the circumference of that wheel. If we add a third cogwheel, smaller one still, that effect is magnified. Now we have big driving middle size, driving small, and there's an incredible increase in speed, so much so that you can hardly see the individual teeth on the tiny little red cogwheel. There's an increase in speed, but you do lose something. Watch this. I can stop the whole mechanism very easily by just touching with a match, and I can't turn that with my finger. There's an increase in speed, but a loss of power. On the other hand, if we start with the red one and turn that, there's a decrease in speed. We seem to be losing, don't we? Although we're losing speed, we are actually increasing power. And I can keep the whole thing going, even though I jam the matchstick in the teeth and try to stop it. So, increase in speed, loss of power. Increase in power, loss of speed. That's very important in all sorts of machines. Have a look in the back shed. You might find one of these, a hand drill. I actually counted the number of cogwheels on this big wheel here. The number of cogs, 64. The number of cogs in the small wheel, 16. So when the big wheel goes around once, the little one goes around four times. You can see that effect if I put something on the little one. That's the part where the drill bit goes in. And now when I turn the handle around once, that'll go around one, two, three, four times. I can turn the handle fairly rapidly, however rapidly I turn that, the drill bit will turn around four times that speed. Fast enough, in fact, to drill through wood. And you'll find cogwheels in all sorts of other places as well. For example, if you have a music box at home, plays music, the dancer turns, but if you have a look underneath, you'll find that that's all driven by a clockwork motor. And here, you get big wheel driving small wheel, big wheel driving small wheel again to drive the drum to make the music and that drum is moving more rapidly than the spring is unwinding. And the little dancing lady has another big wheel to small wheel cogwheel mechanism to make her move even more rapidly. Same thing happens with clockwork toys. Wind them up and let them go. And they usually move quite rapidly. They move rapidly because they have inside them a spring and cogwheels. Can you guess? What sort of mechanism we have with those cogwheels? Yes, you're absolutely right. When we wind the spring, the spring is attached to a big cogwheel, which drives a small one, 
big to small, big to small, big to small, it happens three times. So you get an incredible increase in speed at which the axle and wheel rotates. Well, you know that there are cogwheels in your bike. You know there are cogwheels in clocks and old-fashioned watches. See how many other places you can find cogwheels this week. Mm.